Welcome back, peasants. It has been a really long time, and I'm sorry about that, and I'm going to try to fix that in the future. For today's video, I'm going to be attempting to re-whiten and clean two petticoats that I bought in Ohio about two weeks ago when I just had a free day, and so I went antique shopping to a bunch of different places looking for dresses and petticoats. And I happened to find two petticoats. This is the one. And here's the other. Very, very beautiful. Like, oh, they're so thin and the lace work and everything is magnificent. They are both a little bit yellow. This one is worse. It has, it's just the lace has turned cream and stuff like that. I am by no means a expert conservationist. In fact, I don't know a lot of what I'm doing and I do not have the money or the resources to pay or to buy really high-end, like, archival-friendly cleaning supplies. When I do store my antiques, I do store them in archival textile boxes with non-buffed tissue paper, but I haven't done much research on where to find cheap and affordable cleaning products that are safe on antique garments. So what I use is OxyClean. <laughs> if you have any recommendations for cheap and safe archival cleaning supplies, please let me know because if there are some out there, I would love to invest in that to help preserve the life of garments. With as common as petticoats are, I'm not super worried about it right now. And, and I have used OxyClean on garments before, and I haven't seen noticeable damage from it. At the same time, I also realize it could be so minute that I'm not seeing it. But that is all that I have right now. So basically, I'm just going to show you my process, and we'll see if these lovely gorgeous pieces turn back to pure pristine white again, which is what I'm hoping is going to happen. Both of these petticoats are Edwardian, judging by the structure, make, and lace work that is done on them, but I have no idea which exact year from the Edwardian period. So come along with me and let's see if we can get these white and clean. On this petticoat, We've got some really lovely geometric patterning here where they mix the insertion lace with, um, I don't know, this other lace that they have in here. I'm not sure what this is actually called. So if you know, please leave a comment down in the comments <laughs> and let me know. There's also a series of four pin tucks here and the waist is actually pleated all the way around the skirt and then heavily gathered in the back, as you can see there, into a very narrow waistband. Also, it's not really picking up, but this thing is very, very yellow. Down on the side gores, we've got gathering with that strip of beautiful eyelet, whatever it is. And then we've got two pin tucks here, row of insertion lace, two pin tucks, row of insertion lace that goes all the way around the bottom, and then two more pin tucks and it's all finished off with this really gorgeous eyelet edging that is actually different than this patterning. So there's three different kinds of laces used here. You can see there's a couple small holes here, and over here we've got a little bit of damage going on. Not much on the back, the waistband has yeah, there's like a hole there and stuff. This waistband is interesting. I can't tell if it was originally a drawstring or if it was, you know, done with hooks and eyes. It appears like there's just a random thread there. So yeah, maybe she just held it together with a straight pen. I don't know. 
this petticoat is a lot more yellow. This one has, basically it's just Pentux insertion, Pentux insertion, Pentux, another type of insertion lace, and then gathered Pentux on a ruffle, and we've got this beautiful edging lace here as well. Underneath that though, this was all attached on top of the petticoat and you can see the finishing stitch right there to hide the seam allowances. So underneath we've got the rest of the petticoat and this ruffle underneath. Now, interesting thing with this petticoat is there is a whole line of visible scarring here from what looks like where it was taken in almost three inches and then ripped and let out. And at first I thought this went the whole way around the petticoat, but it only goes around the front. If I flip it over to the side, you can see it tapers in to the side seam. So not sure what this <laughs> was all about. I'm confused because I would have expected this to be in the back, you know, that, oh, maybe they let it out because they wanted a slight train, but this is in the front. I don't know, was it made for one sister and then the other sister was a lot shorter and she wanted it there to be a train and so she just put a tuck in the front to raise the front up and let the back drag on the ground a little bit. I have no idea. I think it's kind of unique and odd. If any of you have run into this, let me know and let me know what you think it might have been. And this petticoat closes with a drawstring and yeah, the string is very yellowed. It's very yellowed around here. The skirt is actually pleated into the waistband and then when you pull the drawstrings together around the waist, it just gathers all up. So I'm going to go ahead and get these ready to turn back into beautiful white again. Um, I feel like the color is not showing up just how yellow this petticoat is, so. I'm going to go ahead and soak them for several hours and dry them and give them a good press and then we shall see if they look any whiter. I started by taking a scoop or two of OxyClean and adding it to a bucket. Then I put the bucket under my tub faucet and filled it with the hottest water that I could get. Once the bucket was full of water, I carefully added my petticoats into it bit by bit. Now I'm going to let these sit here for the afternoon and soak. Many hours later. After several hours of soaking, I dumped the water out. You can see that it's kind of tan in color. It definitely worked. It took out the stain, dirt, whatever that was making those petticoats yellow. Then I just kept refilling the bucket and dumping out the water until there were no more suds because I didn't want any OxyClean remaining in the petticoats. All right, 
right, so I've got them all wrung out and I have them hanging on hangers. I folded them in half so that the weight would be distributed instead of hanging them from a pant hanger where all the weight would just be hanging off of the waistband because these things are incredibly fragile when they're wet. But once it's dry, these, you know, the cotton's gonna be super sturdy again. So I'm just going to leave these hanging to dry overnight and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and see how they've dried and then maybe give them a press and then we'll see how beautiful and white they have become many hours later I am so pleased with how this turned out. The petticoats are white and clean, and after pressing them, they are just immaculate and gorgeous. This one just, yeah, turned out splendidly. It is so beautifully white. Uh, at some point, I will probably try to mend that little tear there, but other than that, it doesn't really have any large holes or major issues. Uh, it's very sturdy. It's incredibly sturdy for being so lightweight. And this petticoat ironed out wonderfully too. It's a lot heavier, um, but this one has great body, incredible shape, and this one is, yeah, a little bit of a thicker cotton and a lot more sturdy and just robust in its entirety. Thank you for joining me today on my little cleaning adventure. If you want to join me for more sewing and antique adventures, hit that like and subscribe button down below and feel free to leave a comment. I love interacting with all of you. Until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful life.